My dearly beloved in Christ, I'm sure you are aware of the fact that Pope Pius XII, wishing to honor our Blessed Mother, proclaimed the fact of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, body and soul into heaven, as a dogma of the faith. This infallible proclamation was made with great pomp and ceremony on November 1st, 1950. But that does not mean that it was a new doctrine, for Catholics have always believed in the Assumption. In fact, the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady is the oldest feast, I believe, of our Blessed Mother, celebrated since the earliest centuries. However, when he proclaimed this dogma, Pope Pius XII carefully refrained from ruling on the question of whether or not our Blessed Mother died before her assumption. In other words, did her soul actually leave her body? Did she thereby experience death? Now, the common opinion of theologians is that, yes, our Blessed Mother did die, but that her death was completely free from any pain, any suffering, any sorrow, that it was like falling asleep. In fact, in the Eastern Rite, there is a Feast of Our Lady, previous to her Assumption, referred to as the Dormition of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the falling asleep of Our Lady. At any rate, our Blessed Mother was taken into heaven after she concluded her earthly sojourn, she was taken into heaven, body and soul. And I'd like to read a little bit from St. Alphonsus Maria Liguori, The Glories of Mary, regarding the Assumption. And first of all, he addresses the question, why did our Blessed Mother remain on this earth after the ascension of her divine Son into heaven, which of course took place 40 days after his resurrection? Ascension Thursday. Our Lady's union with her Son was so great, her desire to be with him was so great, that it was like a martyrdom for her to re remain on this earth for some 20 years after his ascension. So why was that the case? Listen to the words of St. Alphonsus. After the ascension of her Son, Mary remained on earth to help spread the faith. The disciples of the Lord came to her in their difficulties, and she solved their doubts. She comforted them in persecution and encouraged them to work for God's glory and the salvation of souls. She remained on earth willingly, knowing that this was the will of God for the good of the church. So yes, it was a trial for Our Lady to be separated from her son, but... She received him every day in Holy Communion at the hands of St. John the Apostle. We call to mind the fact that when our Lord died on the cross, his third word from the cross, turning to Our Lady, Woman, behold thy son, and to the disciple, behold thy mother. He thereby gave his mother to us but he also entrusted her in a special way to the care of his beloved disciple, St. John, the only one of the apostles who stood there with Our Lady at the foot of the cross. And so Our Lady lived with St. John, attended Mass, offered by him every day, received her divine Son in Holy Communion at his hands. And as the reading just pointed out by St. Alphonsus, she spent those years, again, approximately 20 years. There are different opinions of theologians, a little more, a little less, but about 20 years. In order to pray for the spread of the faith and to be a comfort and encouragement to the apostles in those early years of spreading the faith. St. Alphonsus also goes on to speak about the death of our Blessed Mother. And he says that Saint Gabriel, the Archangel, came to reveal to her that the time was come for her to depart this world. She communicated that first to Saint John, 
and threw him to the other apostles. And they gathered, some of them from a great distance. They gathered to be there about her bed as she breathed her last, and to be comforted by her. Our Lady, in the time remaining, after she was told that she was soon to leave this world, visited for one last time the sacred spots in Palestine, sanctified by her divine Son. And then St. Alphonsus says this, The life of Mary was now at its close. Delicate music, as St. Jerome relates, was heard in the room where she lay. According to a revelation made to St. Bridget, the room was also filled with a brilliant light. The sweet music and the unusual light warned the disciples that Mary's soul was about to depart. Again, they began to sob. Raising their hands with one voice, they exclaimed, O oh, Mother, you are now leaving us and going to heaven. Give us your last blessing and promise never to forget us. Mary turned her eyes around the room as if to bid them all a last farewell and whispered, Goodbye, dear children, I bless you. Do not be afraid, I will never forget you. And he goes on to explain circumstances gathered from the testimony of some of the early fathers of the church. But our Blessed Mother's body was laid in the tomb and when one of the apostles who came from a great distance was not there to see her one last time, prevailed upon the others to go with him to open the tomb so that he could look one last time at that beautiful face which so resembled that of our divine Lord. And when they opened the tomb, her body was gone. There were there flowers, she left her veil, there was a wonderful heavenly scent but she had gone, body and soul, to be with her son in heaven for all eternity. As I mentioned, this feast has been celebrated from the earliest centuries. And there is an example given of a wonderful saint who died about 450 years ago. He was from Poland, St. Stanislaus Kostka. And St. Stanislaus had lived a very devout youth and wanted to become a Jesuit novice. So he went to Rome, was received into the Jesuit order, and he wasn't quite 17 years old. As a novice, he was a perfect model of religious living. But he read about the Assumption of Our Blessed Mother, and he had this great desire to be with her in heaven to celebrate the Feast of the Assumption. So he prayed for that, and he even prayed that he would be taken on the night between the 14th and the 15th of August, that he might celebrate the Assumption with Our Lady in Heaven. And when he fell sick in early August, he was telling the other Jesuit novices and religious that he was about to die. And they thought, that's not going to happen. Maybe he has a fever, he's a young man. But when it came close to the Assumption, his health took a turn for the worse, and in fact, he did die on the night of the 14th to the 15th of the Assumption. It is piously believed that every year on her Assumption, Our Lady goes to purgatory and takes many souls into heaven. In fact, there are some who believe that when Our Lady herself was taken into heaven, she cleared out purgatory. She took any of the souls that were there at that time, or at least very many of them. And so that every year, she takes many souls out of purgatory to heaven. And perhaps that is the reason why St. Stanislaus prayed for that grace, that he would be taken into heaven on the Assumption. At any rate, it is a wonderful feast day, and it is one that should remind us of the happiness of heaven and pray for the grace that we will have the desire to leave this earth and be with Our Lady. What is it that holds people in this world? What is it that keeps even Catholics from wanting to die? After all, God made us for himself. Should we not look forward to and desire to leave this veil of tears 
and to be with our Lord and our Blessed Mother for all eternity, Our Lady had nothing to hold her back. Her entire affection was for her Divine Son. So there were no regrets at leaving this earth, just as human beings often are attached to the things of this earth that they have acquired, material things, their house, their property, and especially their loved ones, their family members. And so it is difficult to leave. But Our Lady, once again, was entirely devoted to Almighty God. And so she had no regret. She furthermore had no remorse. This is another cause which makes human beings fear death. And that is a conscience burdened with guilt and awareness of the sins we have committed. But our Blessed Mother never committed even the smallest venial sin. She was always entirely pleasing to God and without any sin whatsoever. And finally, human beings fear death because of the judgment that follows immediately upon death. But our Blessed Mother had no judgment to fear. She knew that she had always been entirely pleasing to her son and that she would be welcomed by him, by all of the angels, as the queen of the angels and the saints in heaven, the queen of all men. So her assumption was a glorious thing, where Our Lady went and was seated at the right hand of her divine Son, and on this feast also was crowned as Queen of Heaven and Earth. Let us look forward to being with Jesus and Mary one day in Heaven, and let us pray for a greater detachment from the things of this world, that when that time comes, we, not, we may not fear to leave it. And especially, pray for the grace to live in such a way that there will be no regrets, no remorse, and that we will eagerly look forward to leaving this world and being with our Blessed Mother, her Divine Son, and all the angels and saints for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.